this is Dr. Nurs in the Organic Chemistry Lab, and what I would like to show you how to do today is how to do a liquid-liquid extraction, which is a very important technique for purifying compounds on the basis of solubility. The theory of this will be covered in lecture, and this little demo is not meant to replace uh, classroom learning. I will actually do the demo again during lecture. It's, it's, it bears repeating. But if, you, if you've forgotten how to do it, you can look at this. Okay, so supposing I have a solution, this is an aqueous solution, and it has obviously a dark blue compound in it. Some organic compounds are actually colored, in fact, most of them are. Most of the dyes that you encounter in your clothing are organic compounds. So this is a colored organic compound in an aqueous solution, that means it's in water. And what I want to do is pull the solution, pull this blue compound out of this water because there might be other contaminants in it that I want it to get away from, okay? To do this, we would use what's called a separatory funnel. And this is a separatory funnel. You have different sizes. I'm using your medium sized here. You pick your glassware based on the volumes you're working with. So this is a 125 milliliter fun funnel. A lot of times you're gonna have to make this decision on your own. I'm gonna work with about 100 mils of solution, so this is an appropriate volume, okay? So what I wanna do is pour this in to my funnel. Um, these kind of tops are made so that you can hold them in your hand and not lay them down on the counter. Um, I'm going to take this and pour it into my separatory funnel, or at least I'll pour some of it in. There's actually a lot of dye in this. It's very viscous solution here. Okay. And what I'm going to add to this is a solvent that the dye is soluble in. So you will see that some of the dye hopefully move from this, this aqueous layer into this layer. This is dichloromethane, and dichloromethane is insoluble in water, or it is almost, almost completely insoluble in water. It's what we call an organic solvent. And very often organic chemists do extractions with organic solvent because they're trying to remove organic molecules from other inorganic molecules that would not be soluble in the solvent. So you pick this solvent based on the solubility of the compound that you're trying to isolate, okay? So I'm going to pour this in, and one of the big issues that all chemists face on a daily basis, and by the way, chemists do this technique, professional chemists do this every day. One of the problems we face every day is we don't know which layer is which. So I want you to watch this, and, t and you can think about this for lab lecture, which layer is which. So I'm pouring this in. Can you see that, Ian? Oh, kind of. Kind of? I'll take it out. So I just added that layer. You might have been able to see what happened. But if you look at this, you might already have a guess. Maybe my colors are too dark. But you might already have a guess about the layers. If you look at it, the top up here is much darker than the bottom. And if you watched it, the layer, the dichloromethane actually trickled down to the bottom. And you can see that the dichloromethane is pulling the blue molecules out of the aqueous layer. How does it look now? Looks pretty good. Pretty good. You can see the differentiation. Okay. So when I do it in class, I'm going to do it a little bit lighter, and I'm going to do it on a bigger scale. What I want you, want you to think about is, in addition to which layer is which, I want you to think about how do you get more of the blue material to pass into the organic layer. Because that's what we want to do. We want to extract all of it out and leave any um, insoluble materials behind. And you could let it sit like this forever. You know, we could just put it here, leave it overnight, and when we come in the next day, it would have equilibrated and we'd have collected the maximum number of molecules out of that layer. But the way you enhance this is by shaking the funnel. And you don't shake it like this. That's what everyone wants to do, okay? That's poor technique. The way you want to shake it is you want to swirl it like this about 10 times. Hold the, if you're right-handed, hold the cap in your left hand and the stopcock in, what did I just say, backwards? Hold the cap in your right hand and the stopcock in your left hand. If you're left-handed, switch it around, okay? So what you do is you swirl, and then what you do, open the vent, Open the stopcock because sometimes there's gas pressure that builds up in there. That's called venting or burping it. Sometimes people call it burping. Swirl it. Vent it. Notice I'm venting it into the hood. You do not want to point it 
at your neighbor. And you want to think a little bit why you would not want to do that. Swirl it. Vent it. You'll hear gases coming out of there. Now you'll notice upon doing this, the bottom layer has gotten a little darker. Okay, and this is a very inky blue solution. I don't know how happy I am with this, but we'll see. Can you see any? But I think at this point they look almost the same color. They are so dark. So what happened through that, what happened through that, when I was swirling it, I was increasing the surface area between the two layers in a gentle way. When you lay it on its side, there's a greater surface area between the layers. By swirling it, you get the layers to mix a little bit, and you get a much more rapid equilibration between the layers, because this is an equilibrium process. Okay? So we want to speed that up. Then what we want to do is separate the layers. Okay? Now, again, you have to decide. You can kind of see it a little better now, I think. But um, you have to decide which layer is which, okay? Now in this case, as we observed, the organic material went to the bottom, but you never really know. It takes a lot of experience, and even experienced people have to figure this out. How else can you figure out which layer is which? Well, one thing you could do is before you come into lab, you could look up the density of each solvent. Look up the density of water, which is about 0.99. Look up the density of dichloromethane, okay? The other thing is sometimes we just can never tell. With all, if we are completely prepared, we still don't know which layer is which. I want you to think about for lab lecture what experimental technique you could use to tell which layer is which. We want the organic layer. How could you prove that the organic layer is truly organic, the aqueous layer truly aqueous, just doing a very simple laboratory test? Okay, what do I do? Good technique. You always put something underneath the funnel. When I was a student, I did not do this, and I'm going to tell you a story about that when you get in lab. Very tragic, tragic mistake. Always have a beaker underneath. Um, what you normally do is you drain the bottom layer out the bottom, and you take the top layer out the top. So I'm going to take the bottom layer out, and I'm going to redo this if I have time, so you can see a little less color in that lower layer. You can kind of see it coming out. It's drizzling out. Now, never do this. This is a common mistake. We all do this. You might want to think about what is the problem with that. You'll start to note the flow has slowed down. Why is that a problem? Think about it. I'm going to take the lid out. Okay, let us, notice it starts flowing quickly again. If your liquid isn't flowing, you probably have the lid in or you have a clog. So I'm draining out the bottom layer, which you can see is a nice kind of royal blue. How are we on time? Eight, eight minutes. Okay. All right. So I took the layer, lower layer out. Now, if I wanted to take the upper layer out, I would pour it out the top because when you pour it out the top, you're less likely to cross contaminate it with the bottom. I just want to show you one more um, extraction. So I'm taking a little more dichloromethane. This is how a chemist would do it. Take it right out of the bottle. <laughs> okay. A little more. Now, one of the things your textbook emphasizes is that you have to do multiple extractions to get all the compound out. I mean, notice it's still blue, and it's still taking a lot out. So I didn't achieve the lightness that I wanted to. But what, think about, why would you want to extract it with more dichloromethane? Why, why would I want to use more? Because there's still blue molecules up in that upper level. They didn't all come out. They distribute according to their relative solubility. So what you would take with this, what you would do with this is do the same process, venting, the same process. I would do this at least 10 times. Notice the gentle way I'm doing it. Not shaking it. Why do I not want to do this? Well, the lid could blow off from the pressure. And the other thing is you create emulsions. That's a good thing when you're making salad dressing. It's a bad thing when you're doing an extraction. It takes longer for emulsions to separate. And you would just continue on this way, adding dichloromethane until you got all the needed molecules out. So again, this isn't replacing what we're going to do in lab. We're, there's going to be a more elaborate demonstration on a larger scale, but this might get you in the mindset of what you have to do this week. Okay, thanks.